So let us pick up from where we uh, stopped in the last video, in the last part of the presentation. We were discussing or we were looking at the code generation for the UI form. And what we saw there, just to recap, was this construction here, right? And <clears throat> what this does is it uh, basically calls a method here. This is a method call on an object. This is the object. And I use o.split just as a kind of skeleton for the structure. I don't want to call the split method. I want to call the method that is kind of identified by this expression. And <clears throat> it uh, obviously calls the setter um, of the instance on which we want to, or of the entity and instance on which we want to set a value. So this stuff, right, all of this retrieves the value that the user has entered into the form and sets it or passes it into the setter on the instance of the entity for which we've entered something into the UI form. Now, again, this thing here, this blue thing with a blue background, that is a so-called expression block. Actually, it's called a block expression. I never know which one. Um, and, well, we can find out. We can just mark this and control shift s It's called block expression. Okay. So it is a statement list. So basically a block that can be used wherever an expression is expected. So that's why we can write all this kind of stuff within the parentheses of the method call. So um, what, what we do in here is at this point not very interesting. The interesting thing is that we have extended the Java implementation base language in MPS with this new construct, the expression block, block expression, <laughs> and um, I want to show how this extension works. So let's go to the block expression. That's the thing we have seen. And we can show where it is, right? It is in a language, blah, 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 dot expression blocks. Right? And that dot expression blocks language extends, once again, the menu has scrolled out of the screen, it extends base language. Extending in this case means, as I said, access to language concepts. And in this case, we really extend the language because our block expression extends expression. So this means that wherever Java base language expects an expression, we can now use a block expression. And that block expression owns another statement list, which allows us to enter, well, you know, a list. Where is it? There's something else. Where's the list of... Uh, oh, sorry, I was at the wrong place. I wanted to go here. A statement list basically cons <coughs> contains a list of statements, which allows us to enter whatever we want. Notice this yield thingy. The yield expression, or the yield statement, I should say, is a statement that kind of returns the value that should be used as the expression that this whole expression block or block expression uh, wraps. So in other words, in this use of the block expression, we do stuff and then we return this new value. So whatever that new value is will be used as the expression here. Now, how do we implement that? Obviously, what we do is actually quite simple. We um, take these uh, statement list, the statement list, put them into a method, basically a kind of a brother sibling to the method in which we currently are, so in the same class. And then from this place here, from the location of the actual block expression, we call that method. And the yield is going to be a return. So um, let's see. Um, well, the interesting thing is the generator for the block expression. Here is the yield. Yield is a statement. So <clears throat> it um, can be used um, within a statement list. And the expression, again, is whatever is yielded back to the, well, basically returned from the method we generate. So let's look at the implementation of the generator because that's the interesting thing. Sorry, this generator is here. So here's our generator. And here is our generator mapping configuration. We do two things. Well, we do a lot of things, but the most important thing is the block expression itself is handled through a reduction rule and through a weaving rule. A weaving rule is a rule that creates something, in this case a method, at a different location from where the thing is 
which we transform. So the block expression is, you know, somewhere an expression in, in the program. And we create whatever this template creates, which is a method. The stuff within the TF brackets is what's generated. And um, let me just clean this up. And we put this method basically into the same class to which we transform the class we're currently working with. So basically, we're we're, at, sorry, we're we're creating a sibling of the current of the method in which we find the expression which we work with. So, so this weaving template, as we've seen here, we have a dummy class. We need a class so we can put a method there, and then basically we create a method. The return type of the method is interesting because it basically is the type of the um, statement um, of the yield. And then we create a method. The name is either explicitly given in the block expression or we just generate some kind of unique name. There is a utility function for that. And then we have to do something about the parameters. I'll get back to that in a second. And we put in all we iterate over all the statements in our um, block expression and just put them into the <clears throat> put them into this generated method. So this method contains the same statements that were in the statement list in our block expression, and um, well, that's basically it. That creates the method. Through this context specification, it is defined where the method method goes, and as I said, it goes to the uh, basically to the class in which we currently are. And then we have to make sure that from the location where we use the block expression, where, where it has been in the original program, we reduce it with another template and it needs to be reduced to a call to the method we have just created. So we basically have some kind of method dummy here and we again use a so-called reference macro to actually refer to the method we have created uh, above. And again, we need to do something about the arguments. I'll get back to that in a second. And we have used a so-called mapping label defined here, which basically is a, well, it's a variable that remembers identities. So it basically says this mapping label, block expression to method, remembers the relationship between the original block expression and the method we have created. And the way we did this is in the original, in the, in the weaving thing you can see here we have attached this block expert to method label to the method we generate so we generate this method we remember its identity through this kind of mapping label and then in our reduction template where we reduce the actual occurrence of the block expression with the call to the generated method we then retrieve the identity of the generated method through this mapping label and by that we kind of wire up this reference to the actual method we, we want to use so that's basically it. It's not not that complicated once once uh, you understand how these different um, templates and and rules work. Um, there is one problem with the parameters because um, there is <clears throat> this thing. Let me see. Right here. From within this list of statements, you can of course refer to any variable in the environment. Um, don't know if we actually do that here, but the um, problem is that um, these references to variables in the environment need to become, need to be, well, we need to create method parameters for each of these arguments and then pass them when we call the method. And the way this works is that upon creation of the block expression here where we create the method, you can see that we create a bunch of arguments <coughs> Right, we use the type and the name of the actual variables, and we loop over whatever the collect external variable refs returns. So that's a helper method, which um, basically goes through all the variable declarations, or sorry, goes through all the variable references anywhere within the block expression. So this descendants helps us grab all children of that type. So we go through all of them. Um, we then check that 
the variable that we refer to uh, isn't local to the uh, to the to the to the exp block expression, and if it's not, then we add this local variable reference to a collect uh, so, sorry that variable declaration to the list of variable declarations we return. So this function or this helper method gives us a list of all those variables variable declarations that are referred to from within our block expression. Once we have that, we can. I should. Uh, we can then create a method argument for each of those. It has the same type as um, the argument from which we. Uh, uh, sorry, as the local variable to which we refer, and it has the same name. And then when we call this generated method, we again loop over these guys and create a local variable, well, a variable reference to that thing. There is a helper function create reference, um, oops, which um, that's the wrong one. It's in the super class, so it, it's, it's actually implemented in subclasses. I can show that later. Um, and, and, and we create the reference and pass them in here. So this means that as a consequence of this approach, each variable that is referenced from within the block, ex block expression and isn't declared in the block expression is transformed into an argument of the generated method and the actual variable reference is kind of passed in. So by this way, we kind of um, pass the data between the environment and the actual object. Finally, um, there is one more thing. There should be the yield somewhere. Here, the yield statement is simply transformed into a return with the same expression. So this way, we can now at any place in Java, kind of where we use an expression, we can now use this guy. So just to demonstrate that, uh, this OK button is a local variable reference. I can remove that. I can put in a block expression. I can now do whatever I want. Um, I can declare a new variable. Um, well, int a equals 10. And uh, then I can use yield to, again, use the OK button. And that OK button is a reference to outside this thing. So that's going to be transformed into the argument. So this is an example of a non-trivial transformation. And it's also an example of language extension because if users um, in their programs include the uh, block expression language, um, then we can simply use block expressions at any location where so far an expression has been used and we can kind of put in any additional information. Okay, so that's it. Next uh, tutorial will look at uh, language reuse.